Now, costing techniques uh, form a central part of the management accounting paper, and we should feel pretty much at home with the idea that absorption costing is aimed at handling the problem of associating indirect or overhead costs with cost units themselves. That's really the principal focus. Direct costs, no problem, because they are, by definition, directly attributable to, to the product. Let's uh, separate out here the terms that are necessary, allocation and apportionment. The idea is to be able to, uh, from an organizational perspective, to split up the and uh, distribute these costs among cost centers. We see here two production centers, A and B, and a service center. This could be, for example, a warehouse or a canteen or something similar which supports the production but doesn't actually handle uh, the product, the products themselves. Best way to uh, appreciate this is to look at a uh, concrete case with, um, with some numbers. If we were to imagine that a company that is involved in producing um, white goods, fridges and toasters, uh, had total overhead costs uh, amounting to $15,000, and the breakdown is between rent, indirect materials, power and equipment insurance, we can see at first glance that it's very difficult to uh, and not immediately obvious how the rent, for example, would be um, split up between toasters and refrigerators. So we would need to tackle this problem in a somewhat indirect way following the, the following logic. First of all, we would need to decide how the overhead costs can be split up. These overhead costs adding up to $15,000 could be apportioned to the different cost centers mentioned before A, B, and C. Remember the first two are production centers and the third is a cost center. Now for rent, the square meter of space occupied by the uh, each of the departments uh, suggests itself as a, as a reasonable way of splitting up those costs. The indirect materials upon further examination, it was able to in fact attribute the indirect materials, if not directly to the products themselves, at least to where those indirect materials were being consumed uh, organizationally. So we could split up $1,500 between A, B, and C. The power was done on the basis of kilowatt hours consumed, and the equipment was done, this is a insurance, was done on the basis of book values of the equipment residing in the three cost centers. So that's a first uh, split up of the of the cost. And that, that's a good thing. Now, if one looks back at the uh, roadmap we have on the first page of this chapter, what we've done is we have achieved step two. We've allocated or apportioned the overhead costs to the respective cost, cent uh, cost centers in the organization. Now, step three, involves reapportioning the service center costs to the production centers themselves. Why do we do this? Why do we want the costs to be grouped uh, between the production centers? Because our destination is the cost unit itself. And since those cost units are produced in the production centers, that's where we need to converge on. So we need to take the costs for service center C and reapportion it between A and B. And that can be done based on an examination of the way in which C may be used by A and B. It may be the fact that um, A requires um, C's services and uses up its its um, capacity to the tune of 65% and therefore it's considered reasonable to take the $2,300 of overhead costs in C and to break it up roughly on a two-thirds, one-third basis between A and B. The best test of such a system is to see whether um, the manager of Department A or the manager of Department B shouts 
unfair. I don't like this basis. It's not accurate. It's not uh, justified. So one can see that the choice of bases and the rules used to make the split up of costs is really a result of management analysis and discussion and ultimately decision. And if there is disagreement between A and B, the general manager has to come in and he basically has to impose a decision so that people know where they are heading. Now let's go to the uh, next step here and the actual absorption of the uh, overhead costs. Here we have total overheads 8,600 um, connected to uh, production department A and 6,400 connected to production department B. The two added together of course equals $15,000. Those, those costs don't get lost. Always keep in mind that they have to add up to $15,000. We're just shifting around uh, those costs. We're not eliminating them or anything like that. Let's uh, suppose now, here's a big assumption, that the company absorbs overhead costs on the basis of direct labor hours. What does that mean? It means that the company is figuring out what its labor hours are that it consumes against the overhead costs and makes a, a linkage between the two. We can do this, for example, on a departmental basis. We could say for workshop A, if workshop A um, in a given period consumes 1,400 or has 1,400 direct hours of labor uh, worked uh, against overheads of $8,600. Dividing 8,600 by 1,400 gives us 6.14. The interpretation of this number is that for every labor hour worked in workshop A, $6.14 of overheads are incurred. That's the definition. That's the interpretation of this number. Similarly, if workshop B is 950 hours against overheads of 6,400, this implies an overhead absorption of $6.74 so that for every hour worked in workshop B, let's say in the first morning uh, of, the, of, of a given period, 10 labor hours are worked in workshop B, at that moment the production manager would multiply 10 hours by 6.74 and in the, in the records $67.40 of overheads would have been um, absorbed by that time. So what we've done, what we've calculated here is so-called overhead absorption rate and each workshop is keeping track of its costs according to its specific overhead absorption rate. The other way we could solve this problem if there isn't a great variance between absorption rates in the two workshops is to do a company-wide overhead absorption rate which means we simply divide the total overhead cost of 15,000 by the total number of direct hours which are budgeted in the company, direct labor hours, 2,350, and say, okay, our overhead absorption rate will be $6.38 per direct labor hour. This means now, effectively, that we can apply this overhead absorption rate in coming up with a uh, cost card for our specific products, the toasters and the refrigerator. And this is how it's done. The cost card for a fridge will have direct materials and direct uh, labor. Those are and variable overheads. These are all um, variable costs that are directly connected to the um, uh, level of output which is made and this is on a cost per unit basis. Notice here that direct labor to produce one fridge according to this uh, cost card requires a standard of 1.75 hours of direct labor. Therefore on the cost card when we include the fixed overheads here we will take the standard time required to produce a fridge 1.75 labor hours multiply it with the 
company-wide overhead absorption rate of $6.38 to determine the dollar amount of fixed overheads which are absorbed by one unit of a uh, one refrigerator, one, one unit of product. This is a fully absorbed, uh, full production absorption costing method. Similarly, the toaster cost card will have also its uh, direct um, materials and labor and variable overheads. And then here's the fixed overhead portion. That's also going to be an application of the $6.38 multiplied with the time it takes, the standard time it takes to produce one toaster, which is in this case shown as 0 0.3 hours. In this way, we now have a dollar amount per unit of product representing the fixed overheads to be absorbed. So, in summary, one has here a description of the steps that were followed on the previous pages to determine how to arrive at a fully absorbed cost, production cost, uh, on a per unit basis, linking overhead costs to the product itself. The candidate is advised to uh, review the basis uh, on which uh, overhead absorption rates are, are determined. They're reviewed usually on an annual basis and uh, they have to be obviously adjusted to the actual realities because the actual overhead costs will rarely equal the budgeted amounts and there's going to be variances and so on and therefore there will often be an over and un or under absorption of factory head, uh, overheads. That's just a normal thing because that's um, reality. So when the actual activity level differs from what is uh, what has been used in predetermining the absorption rates. In other words, if the overhead absorption rate is based on a standard output of 1,000 units and the factory produces temporarily at 1,050 units, then it's going to exceed the amount of overheads to be absorbed.